Okay, hello and uh, welcome to a quick tutorial, uh, hopefully a quick tutorial anyway, on um, ITC land systems and how to use the artillery in it. I'm going to be going through three different types of fire mission, grid fire missions, shift fire missions and polar fire missions. This is useful for gunners to know how to use their weapon systems and also useful for observers to know what types of fire missions uh, they can call them and what information they need to give to the gunner and I think observers would be surprised especially with the ease uh, with which they could call in artillery. Uh, the weapon I'm going to be using, uh, the weapon system platform thing, uh, gun, that that thing, that thing, the big the big boom, uh, is the, the M4 Mod 0 Shalef 2 uh, which is the NATO self-propelled gun uh, but the principles are the same no matter which um, kind of howitzer or mortar you're using. So quickly the setup for uh, for, for this tutorial mission, I'm at Firebase Ferret and I've got two OPs, OP Gromit and OP Wallace, who are observing to their north uh, where there are enemies. The only extra equipment I have um, is a dagger. I do have an FTC tablet on me, but I'm not going to be using it. Mm. I'll briefly go over it uh, after burping. Uh, you'll see you've got two apps, App 1 and App 2. App 1 is the battery control system, which I'm going to go through when we're in the vehicle. App 2 is the Cobra radio, uh, radio suite, radar suite. With map view and data view, so uh, this is used when you've got um, counter battery radars, so you can uh, see where enemy guns are and basically return fire at them using uh, using your own guns. So you can have a bit of a, an artillery duel. Okay, without further ado, we'll get into the commander seat. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to toggle my dagger on, so I know what location I'm at. Uh, I'm then going to go interact with the vehicle and open mounted tablet. <coughs> so you've got two apps on here. You've got app one is self propelled gun fire and control interface, and app two is battery control system. Uh, so app one, the fire and control interface, is a really basic um, fire control system where you type in the position, the grid that you want to engage, and the elevation of that grid, what type of round you want, and you calculate a solution from that. It also gives you basic data about your, your vehicle. Uh, the reason that I wouldn't recommend using this, um, except in emergencies, is because you can't do it just fire. So if you miss, you can't then adjust the fire onto the, um, back onto the target. What I'd use instead is up to the battery control system. So you've got settings, setup, stores, and new fire mission. Battery setups where we're gonna input our gun. So, select the type of gun uh, we've got. We're firing 155 uh, millimeter, milli millimeter howitzer, um, and we get our position and etc. from the uh, grid at the bottom, uh, the dagger at the bottom. There. So 20470736, elevation of 43 meters, and we're facing a direction of 332. Save gun. And that's our battery setup. You can have several guns, and that's when you'll have one battery commander controlling several guns and you can give them different uh, different targets, etc. Uh, and doing complicated sheaths and things like that. But for this tutorial, we're going to focus on just firing one gun. You've then got your location stores. This is where you're going to um, input known locations uh, with known grids, known elevations uh, into the gun that you can then reference when you're doing your fire missions. So you're going to want all of your observation posts in this, uh, and you're also going to want um, target reference points uh, and uh, any predefined targets you have. So for this setup, uh, we're going to have the two uh, OPs, OP Wallace and OP Gromit, uh, and then I'm going to assign a, a target reference point. So we'll see OP Wallace, uh, got the grid in the bottom left corner, so it's 18826 10231 uh, and the altitude is 0275 because it's uh, a drone and it's in the air. And you're going to release controls of that one and do the same and write down the, uh, the grid for Gromit, which is 18511 10165 altitude of 0269. Now what's important when you're doing altitudes um, is to remember that you're always using ASL, above sea level. You don't want to use the AGL because that can ch that changes based on um, terrain. However, above sea level never changes, so the calculations can be done off that and uh, you'll actually hit the target. So, at least the UAV controls go back into our tablet. 
location source. So the first one we're going to type in OP Wallace. Is it grid one eight eight two six one zero two three one? Elevation two seven five, and it's a friendly location at noon. I'm going to type in Gromit. So OP Gromit was it good reference one eight five one one point zero one six five, and at an elevation of two six nine. And again, it's a friendly location. So the next thing we're going to add, we're going to add target reference points. So target reference points are positions which are really easy identifiable for the observer. Uh, so for example, the TRP I'm going to use is this junction here. Because it's a, it's a road junction, unless the observer I can identify that road junction, I know exactly where it is. So when I see an enemy up here, I know that's, if I want to know Wallace, I know that's to the right of my, um, my target reference point. What you don't want to do is have random target reference points in the middle of fields where the um, observer can't see exactly where they are. I'm going to make it a road across because because I am. So other good examples of uh, TRPs could be um, identifiable buildings. So you know that's a church, so that church. Um, or kind of uh, radio towers, so like that one. Got petrol stations. Uh, you can use where different... Um, pieces of terrain intersect so for example you've got where this road intersects this ravine you could have uh, try to find a good example uh, any trees so you could have here where the road uh, enters the forest you could have um, quite a good one is where the power lines cross the road. Uh, the only issue with that is power lines do fall down and can be destroyed. Um, if you've got kind of individual rocks, uh, so for example, uh, uh, and, and by individual rocks I mean rocks that are fucking marked on the map, not just a random rock in a field, like this one. Uh, it's just a marked kind of rock formation. But uh, crossroads, and the one I'm going to go for is this road junction, which is TRP001. And you'll see when I go to my uh, observer, pit ducks, it's really easy to identify. You've got this road, you've got that road, and that's the junction. So that, I'm pointing at now, just point side to side, make sure I'm not pointing at that fucking telegram pole. That is TRP001, so that's at like grid 18475111251, and at altitude 0089. So, Going back to my gun. TLP, position 184 elevation 0089. It's not a friendly location, it's a TLP. So you can be setting up these locations um, while the rest of your team is gearing up or the commander's coming up with their plan or what have you. Uh, for OPs, if it's static uh, and a defensive mission, then it's obviously quite easy to um, it's quite easy to uh, know where your OPs are going to be. If you're in an offensive, you might want your observer to uh, identify positions that they think they're going to uh, that they're going to observe from, and mark them as OPs before you go in and work out using your map tools what grid they're at. So that's your location stores. So we've got all our locations saved, we've got our battery set up, we're ready to start shooting stuff. So I'm gonna go back to OP Wallace and control the gunner. So got a TRP there. And if we look over here, we've got some dastardly AF Fenex. And the way we're gonna engage this target <coughs> is with a grid fire mission. So to fire a grid fire mission, all you need to pass to the guns is the grid reference and elevation above sea level of the target. So in this case, the grid is 18872, 11688, and the altitude is 0147. <coughs> now you're also obviously going to want to tell them um, what rounds you want and how many. Now you can either tell them uh, exactly I want HE, point detonate, etc. Or you could just describe the target to them. <coughs> so I've got three Fenix in the open. Uh, can you destroy them? And then the battery commander can decide, right, to destroy three Fenix in the open, I'm going to fire three rounds of, uh, of HE. 
which is what we're going to fire today. So, new fire mission. I'm going to replace the first zero with W because it's from um, OP Wallace. And you've got grid, shift, polar, uh, fire missions here. We're going to go grid fire missions. You can load your known positions straight into this. So if you had predefined targets, you could just load that target and uh, get the station on fire. But it's said when we go for grid. So grid 18872, 11688. And the elevation was 147. And we're going to click next. Uh, this is for your sheaf. Now your sheaf, um, you don't have a sheaf when you've got one gun. The sheaf's only when you've got several guns. Parallel sheaf is where all the guns are facing the same direction. Um, so the same azimuth. Uh, so when the rounds hit, they hit kind of as spaced out as your guns are. Converged means they're all kind of pointing slightly in, so they all land on the, uh, the point target. But we're just going to ignore that for now because of one gun, so it doesn't matter. So you click next and you get your firing solutions. So for gun one, so G1, uh, solution one will be charge three, azimuth 6040, quadrant 293, with time flight of 16 seconds. It's quite a low quadrant. Um, where my gun's set up, I'm quite low down and the target's quite high and there's a lot of hills and stuff, so I'm gonna go for solution two, which has got a much higher quadrant. It's gonna fire up in the air and then come down onto the target. The disadvantage of this is it's got a really long time of flight. So if you are in a hurry, you go for a low quadrant. And you've got these other two solutions, which are even lower quadrants, which I'm not going to go for. So, I need to write that down. Uh, if you're double manning the gun, then you can just shout at your gunner. Uh, three rounds HE, charge three, azimuth 6040, quadrant 1330. Okay, and then if you are going to fire that, you then click, uh, it's kind of you click shot when you fire, and it will give you a countdown like that uh, to when you're firing. Uh, to impact rather than flying. So, into the gunner seat. If you interact with the vehicle, you get open uh, ammo handling interface. This is where you load your ammunition. So, the charge uh, is determined by the solution. It's charge 3 for our HE. You've got four different types of fuses. We're going to use a point detonate fuse. A point detonate fuse means the round hits the ground and explodes. Proximity means that uh, the round determines when it's about to hit the ground and then explodes, giving you an airburst effect time you type in exactly uh, uh, how many seconds after firing you want the round to explode so you need to use that in conjunction with your time of flight and delay means the round will hit the target and then uh, and then basically as it says it will delay by a few seconds before exploding this is useful for targeting buildings and bunkers and uh, and the like because it will penetrate the building and then explode inside the building rather than uh, outside in real life it also makes really big craters but we're not uh, we can't do craters or big craters yet in armor. I'm sure one day we will. Anyway, count is how many rounds you want to fire. So count three, apply settings, load. And it starts loading. Now, because it's an auto loader, you don't need to do anything more. Uh, you can just move straight onto your gun. And you'll see at the bottom, you've got your auto loader status. So your azimuth is your left and right, which is controlled just by moving the gun as you normally would. Your quadrant is your up and down, which you use using page up and page down. If you press the left shift, it will move the page of the quadrant a lot slower. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't for azimuth, but hey. Uh, I've also bound the azimuth to my arrow keys, which gives me kind of uh, the ability to move them a lot quicker, and then use the mouse to fine tune it exactly onto uh, what I need. So the azimuth was 6040 and the quadrant uh, 1330. Now you've got to be careful because sometimes the azimuth does change as you're moving the, the gun just because things are getting nudged around. Uh, so before you actually fire, you just double check that your azimuth and quadrant are correct. So you are almost getting there. Not too far. So almost there, so I'm going to press the left shift and get directly on target. And that's it, we're now ready to fire. So you're going to fire and you're going to uh, tell your observer that you're firing. Uh, usually by saying shot and it will automatically load the number of rounds that uh, you said you want to fire. That's one, two, three. Then if we go back to our observer and get eyes on the target again. And 
now because it's a minute time flight i'm going to speed things up a bit uh, do four times speed so you can see we've slightly missed the target we're about 15 meters to the right with the first shot okay yeah we're also uh, we're probably about 10 meters too far as well because we're landing on the other side of the hill so the correction you're going to give uh, as the observer to the gun will be right 10 meters drop i'm gonna say drop five meters uh, that right 15 meters drop five meters that's um basically generally done as a judgment call you can work it out using the rangefinder uh, but it's quicker and easier to just go i reckon that's about 15 meters now just telling the gun right and drop isn't very useful because they don't know uh, which direction is right so you also need to give them your ot direction so ot is observer to target and that's the direction between you and the target so if you're on foot you can't use a compass um, or some range finders and laser designators will give it to you or if you're a drone you've got it at the bottom there direction so we're at uh, 34 mils so release your v controls hop back into the commander's seat because the commander needs to do the adjustments and you've got adjust slash ffe so just slash fire for effect <coughs> OT direction 34. So add will be plus, drop will be minus, so you want minus 5. Left is again minus, right is plus, so 15. And new D is up or down, um, which is elevation wise. And next, and it recalculates your solution for you. So you'll see the new azimuth is 6042 and new quadrant 1333. Three, three. So we then switch back to the gunner. Open handling interface. That's all exactly the same. So you just load again. And we adjust to the new um, settings. 6042. 1333. Three, three. And we're ready to fire. So we fire. Now what, what you could do if you need, do need a precision shot is rather than just firing hate shoot which is uh, kind of you know, dating all the way back to the First World War method of shooting artillery you can use GPS guided rounds which would uh, where I? Uh, which would guide themselves onto the GPS coordinates you provided now again we're going to speed up because a minute long time of flight and you'll see we've hit almost directly on the target in fact we are a little bit short so you could adjust again but you'll see we're taking the wheels out <coughs> those vehicles wait for the third round to hit see where that goes okay so the third round went a bit further we could have been changing the window or i could have nudged the uh, azimuth um as i was flying okay so that was your grid uh, fire mission you'll notice the music changed uh, that's because mishaps mishaps happened uh, with the autoloader interesting so the next type of fire mission we're going to do is a shift fire mission so again from OP Wallace going to control the gunner and you'll see in these buildings just to the left of our TRP-1 there's a fuel truck and an ammo truck. So to destroy that, we're going to shift off of that position. So our range to that position is 1,095 meters. Our range to that position is 1,222 meters. Uh, so that means it's probably 200 meters or adding 200 meters. So you want TRP 001, add 200 uh, and the left is I'd say about left 150 so you shout to the gun I'll give you call for fire uh, three rounds HE uh, or shift fire three rounds HE TRP 001 
add 200 left 150. So, new fire mission, fire mission 002, and it's a shift fire mission. So the new position is TRP-001. Now what you do need to know is the OT direction, because as with adjustments, left and right means nothing. So the OT direction is 5996. 5996. So, fire mission, whiskey 002, shift off of TRP 001, OT direction 5996, add 200, and then because it's left we need to do minus, so we're doing minus 150. Next. Again, ignore the sheaf, and we've got our firing solution. So, again, I'm going to go for a higher one, and we're going to go. Three rounds, charge three, asthma five, eight, 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 quadrant one, three, three, four. Now we switch to the gunner seat. So, charge three, yep, three rounds, apply, load. So it's going to start loading. And we want different azimuth because we're firing at a different target. Five, eight, eight, eight. If I didn't knock my mouse, that would be it. And the quadrant, we want down to one, three, three, four. And we're ready to fire. So we're going to fire our three rounds. Okay, and then we're rounds complete. So, let's open the UAV terminal, control the gun. Now, this is a bit less accurate than just doing the grid, so we're probably going to have to adjust, hence why I've zoomed out slightly. Uh, and we'll speed up again because ain't nobody got time for that. So, there you go, there's our first hit. Still left of the target, I've adjusted too much. So I could either redo the shift off of TRP-1 or I can adjust from what they're currently firing. It's better to adjust from what they're currently firing because you know that's where they're hitting. If they were to fire on the exact same alphas now, they'd hit the same place. So for that, I probably need to drop about 50 and come right by about 100. So, call back to the commander. Adjust fire. OT direction is the same of uh, whatever it was, 5996. You need to drop 50 and come right by 100. Next. And there you go, it's changed our solution again. So, solution is now 5909, quadrant 1338. Pass that to the gunner. Now, the gunner needs to load again okay don't know why I waited and we're gonna go to 909 and the quadrant is 338 now we're ready to fire so we fire now, if you are adjusting fire like this, uh, firing three rounds at a time is a bit of a waste. You could just do it one round at a time and walk it onto the target. And then when you're on target, do a fire for effect. Um, oh, I forgot to apply the bloody settings, didn't I? Anyway. So I'll fire one round for adjust. And again, we'll speed up.
And you'll see this time I've hit slightly to the right. Uh, slightly to the right and the the add is uh the add, I don't know. What am I talking about? You know what I mean, don't you? Now first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sort out the mess that is this. Right. It's not liking me swapping seats. So OT direction is the same, five nine nine six. And we need to drop um probably line over fifty and come left by number fifty. So now we're on five, eight, nine, seven, one, three, four, one. Okay, to the gunner seat. So shit. Drop the notepad. Five, eight, nine, seven. And four one, so we go. And we fire. Okay. Whether or not this is on target, I'm gonna move on just because time. And also you get the idea that you can just keep adjusting until you hit the target. Um This is kind of the issue with shift fire missions, is that it's based on the the observer kind of getting the shift correct. So in my case, I obviously didn't get the shift correct. Uh, I'm probably going to miss uh, again because I am a pretty terrible forward observer. Uh, let's run around. Close enough. Now obviously when you're doing this sort of thing, the enemy aren't just going to sit there and, uh, and wait around. So you do kind of need to be quick. And there you go. Third round. On target, and that's that. Uh, that enemy fuel and ammo depot now destroyed. That was remarkably successful. I mean, I was expecting that. Okay, so now I'm going to move on to the final type of fire mission. I'm going to go through it's the polar fire mission. This is my favourite type of fire mission because it's the easiest for the observer, and if you've set up everything correctly back in the gun line, it's relatively easy for the gun line as well. Uh, this is where all you give is the direction. Uh, as you observe, all you give to the gun is the direction from yourself to the target, the distance from yourself to the target, and the distance and altitude from you to the target. Uh, if you don't have time to work out the difference in altitude, don't, because um, the gun just gives the altitude of the target, and the gun, gun line can work that out. Uh, that's important because the range could be very different depending on, uh, you know, if you're up a mountain or anything like that. I like this one because it doesn't rely on reference points and it doesn't rely on much map reading. Apart from to get your initial position, so once you've got your initial position, you only need to be good at map reading once, and then you can uh, be firing all day long. So, for example, quite a difficult target would be we've got enemy infantry in the middle of this tree line. Well, that's going to be a difficult one for, uh, for 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 us to find on the map exactly. You know which tree line is it, and and where is it, and where exactly are they in the tree line, and all that. But we don't need to because we're doing a polar fire mission. So. Need the direction, which is five six three six, the distance, which is zero eight one four, and then we need the um, the vertical incline, so the the distance, uh, the difference in elevation. So we're at two six nine, and the target's at seventy nine. So you take seventy nine away from two six nine, which is, as I'm sure we all know, one hundred ninety. Of course, quick maths, quick maths. So we're going down one hundred ninety. So it's minus one hundred ninety. Okay, controls. So first of all, the gunner's going to have to work out. Um, and that. You saw nothing. So this is the first one from Gromit. So Gromit 001. Shift fire polar. Now, speaking of Gromit, he's being annoying. Uh, so the name position, OP Gromit. So this is this is why it's useful to have had all those location stores already set up. Because you can say, right, you're at OP Gromit. Boom. Done. Direction is five six three six. Difference is uh, distance is zero eight one four, and the vertical incline is minus one hundred and ninety. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and click next. Click next again. 
and we got our solution. So again, as we before, we're going to go for quite a high quadrant. This will just enable the rounds to kind of come down at a vertical angle and not hit a hill in the way, which is uh, an issue I've been having. So charge three, azimuth five, seven, five, two, quadrant one, three, five, nine. And as we've been doing before, you pass that to the gunner. Now, have I? So, charge three, three rounds, HE, apply settings, load. And while that's loading, we can get to 5752, which is over here, and 1359. Yeah, perfect. Okay, and we fire. So you can see straight away this is uh, a really quick and easy way for the observer to start just calling in fires, it means they're not messing around with their map, they're not messing around with they are not messing around with their map too much, they're not messing around with um working out grids, with working out oh is that fifty meters to the left or you know is that sixty meters to the left? It's just right at this distance, this direction, and then uh, the gun engages. So if we open the OV area, well, I keep forgetting to do the bloody thing, but uh that one that I'm gonna speed up. Because it's the minute time I fight again. So I said this is my favourite um, method of uh, locating. Now it has missed. It's missed slightly to the right. So all you do is oh, that one's a bit more on target. So when you're adjusting these fires, you want to go for like the the centre of where those uh, those rounds are coming in. So I'd say for the centre, we need to probably drop about ten. So drop 10 and go left 40 maybe should we see that uh, and the distance is still uh, the direction is always five six three nine still so back to the gun command C. obviously the more people you have doing this the, uh, the less fiddly it'll be so you've got your OT of five six three nine and we want to go down, so minus 10. And we want to go to left, so minus 40. Next. So we've got a new azimuth of 5742. And a quadrant of 75. Sounds mental. Let's have uh, another look. Let's go for solution 2. So a quadrant of 1358. Okay, if I've gone for quadrant of 75, that's basically... Hit, like firing straight and it would have hit that massive hill you can see in front of me. All right, so they're gonna see. We want to. Oh shit, we're up for HE rounds. <laughs> anyway, not. There we go. All right. This is obviously gonna be the end of the tutorial <laughs> because I've, I've run out of ammunition. But, uh. So, oh, that's loading. 5742. One, three, five, eight, and we're ready to fire. Now, the more practice you get at this, the quicker you're going to be able to fire and get rounds on target. And the quicker your, the more your observer practices, the quicker they're going to be able to do corrections, um, and they're going to be able to. It'll be one correction, and you're on target rather than. Uh, what I'm probably going to have, which is several corrections before you're on target, I can speed up uh, and hopefully that will hit roughly uh, where the target is. But either way, that's kind of the end of this tutorial. Uh, we've gone through grid fire missions, shift fire missions, polar fire missions. Um, there you go. Meh ish. Um, and then the other thing you've got to remember, uh, actually, especially when engaging infantry, is shrapnel. So, yes, the rounds hit a few meters to the left but that tree line would have had a lot of shrapnel impact and you would still be having an effect on the target uh, but anyway we've gone through grid shift and polar fire missions um, principles are the same no matter what weapon system you're using um, practice makes perfect i'm quite a slow observer quite a slow gunner so it's taken me quite a while to get shots on target um, 
and yeah, this this tutorial is helpful for gunners and observers. Uh, and again, links to the mods uh, that he used are in the description. And uh, I hope you all have a good time shooting out there. Bye.